Hi, I'm Brock Archer with Advanced Extrication. Today on our Quick Tip Tuesday video, we'll talk about the actual lifting capacity of your airbags. So most of the time when we have a job to be done where we need to do some lifting and we're gonna use our airbags, we need to look at how much can our airbags actually lift. And there's a lot of things to consider, but in this short video, I'm gonna to talk to you about the actual lifting capacity versus the theoretical lifting capacity. And I'll talk a little bit about the power curve, how as we lift with our airbags, our lifting capacities are lowered. So let's start with this. All airbags have a lifting capacity listed on the bag. That's the theoretical lifting capacity. That's based on all things being perfect. We're using the entire surface of the bag. Here's what we need to think about. Lifting capacities are rated in PSI, pounds per square inch. So as an airbag comes in contact with the load that we're trying to lift, the amount of contact between the load and the airbag dictates how much lifting strength we have. So we can think about it like this. The PSI inside the airbag, the pounds per square inch, is only affecting our lift where we have contact with the load. So if we've only got a small area in contact with the bag, our PSI calculation is based on how much contact we have with the bag only in that one spot. It's pretty simple. So if we have a 20 inch by 20 inch airbag and we wanna lift with that, the lifting capacity of that bag might be pretty significant. But we need to do some actual calculations to determine how much the bag can actually lift. It's pretty simple. We'll take the width and the length of the bag so in this case, it's a 20 by 20 inch bag. Now, the outer edge of the bag is where the seam is, so we can't count that outer edge of the bag. So we're gonna use 19 by 19 because that seam is about an inch thick. So we have a 19 by 19 inch bag, and we'll say for our purposes today that we are only capturing or making contact with 25% of the bag. So here's how we do the math. We take that 19 times 19, that's the size of our bag, and then we times that by 0.25, that's our percentage of the bag that we have contact with. So 19 times 19 times 0.25 times the pounds per square inch pressure within the bag, and that's gonna be 115, 116, whatever your bags are rated at. So in this case, we're gonna use 116. So let's look at it. 19 times 19 times 0.25 times 116 pounds per square inch, we get 10,469 or about 5.23 tons that we're able to lift with that bag. That's how we calculate the actual lifting capacity of our airbags. So we can't look at an airbag and look at the lifting capacity and say, okay, that's what we've got. We've got to look at the load contact to determine what we can actually lift with the bag. Now, another consideration is as the bag rises, we have what's called the power curve. As the bag rises, because it's a balloon shape or a circular shape, as the bag rises, we lose contact with some of the load. As we lose contact, we lose pounds per square inch pushing force and therefore our lifting capacities decrease. So as we lift, we're gonna lose capacity. That's why we say, even if we only need one bag, always utilize two if you can get away with it. Get, get as close to the load as you can with your airbag and then try to sneak two bags in there. Because once we've lifted with a bag over about one inch, we start to deal with power curve, loss of contact with that load, therefore reducing the lifting capacity of the airbags. There's a lot more to learn about airbags. If you have them in your department, get them out, practice, use them. We'll cover more about lifting with airbags in another quick tip video later on. Thanks for watching this quick tip video. I'm Brock Archer with Advanced Extrication. Take care, be safe.